Mm. You got to think about it. Me and Gunner talked every day when he was in jail. Mm. Now y'all get out and y'all y'all put, you know, a, a title on him because y'all don't know. Nothing, basically. You know, and it's trendy. Mm. So it's, I ain't going to lie, like it's, it's, it's sad. You know what I mean? Like how fast, like somebody can say something and everybody run with it. And some of that shit was funny. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like you see the jokes and we laughing like, damn, that was a good one. You know what I'm saying? But in, in reality, it's like you see a seven figure check come in and I can still take care of my family. And you know what I'm saying? I still stand it on my morals and what I believe in. And and it's I'm not saying ha ha like it's a good thing. Like it was a hurt for ha ha too. Mm. It's a lot of I don't fuck with no more. Mm. And it just is what it is. But we growing like we men. It happens. It's nothing that you can do about it. You swallow it and you wake up and you go. How long did it take for you to wake up and go? Because hearing it, it sounds so easy, but like that's a process. Like for for people, you to cut people off, people to cut you off, for it to hit home and like, man, this is really acting weird. How how long did that you think that took for you to really wake up? I'm still I'm still waking up. Mm. I'm still getting the cold out of my eyes. Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you're suffering from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like, every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. <laughs> oh my gosh, bro. <laughs> like, how, like it, it got to feel like surreal, right? Like just on the other side of everything. It's like an aha. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like Come aha, on, man. Like with your nuts dragging to the floor. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Damn. Like, it's crazy how... <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's crazy how things work, right? Let's get this interview started, man. What's poppin'? You know what time it is. Your boy, Mr. J. Hill. J. Hill Podcast. Special guest in the building. I mean, Mr. Run that shit back, Turbo. We got uh, Turbo the Great in the building. What up, dog? What's up, my brother? I'm all right, man. Um, it's a pleasure to have you here on the on the, um, the, the, the platform, the podcast. Mm -hmm. We were just talking about you about to drop a, a single Friday. Uh, We're going to drop this soon, so... They can see this, probably try to speed this up. We got a lot in the queue, but we're going to try to yeah. speed this up. Yeah. So you're dropping a project, and I was asking you, like, just how would it feel? Yeah. Just an icebreaker. Like, how, how does that feel just knowing that you're about to drop a project, I mean, a, a single with Gunna, and, and, like, the R's are in your favor. Like, all of the R's are in your favor right now. I mean, I just, it, it feel good to be real. Mm. You know what I mean? And, like, and be a man. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, mm. I feel like that's kind of lacking right now. That's a fact. People don't know how to be men. You know what I'm that's saying? You don't know how to make a decision and and stick to to what you want to do. Mm. You know what I mean? So that was really like a huge thing for me. Like my friends and people I love was telling me like, nah, don't fuck with them, don't do it. Like, nah, hell no. Nah. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what? Damn, you just fucking me up. Sheesh. Damn, bro. Like, nah, no cap because I talk about that all the time because like. Mm, mm, mm. I feel like in, I think I just tweeted this, bro. I, swear, I can't make this up. I feel like a lot of times, nah. Matter of fact, nah. Hold up, give me one second, bro. Yeah. I'm not. I can't make this up, bro. Yeah, like when I say real. you hit, you hit, you hit the nail on the coffin. Uh, it was a picture, and I started to delete the caption, but like, nah, I'm gonna keep it. So what I said was, <laughs> I said, um, my neighborhood taught me the importance of being solid, and because of that, I could genuinely say I'm happy with the person, the reflection I see in the mirror each day. Yeah. A man who stands out amongst so many. Who glorify being fake, but mis misleading the word fake for is just business. And I feel like when you say just being a man, I feel like in this industry, we glorify fake, but it's so easy to get it misconstrued because it's always like, don't take it personal, it's just business. It's so glorified to the point to where people don't know that that's wrong. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, it's like lie first, and then if you catch me, like, no, nah, it's just business. Mm. Like, I mean, what? Like, you know what I'm saying? And it's and it's then got so normal. People flex. Everybody rich. Mm. Instagram, everybody rich. 
You go to Miami, then you see the Lamb trucks and the Rolls Royces. Whew. At home, you see the condos or mm. whatever. And then in person, it's like y'all eating cookout. Mm. That's a fact. Or your baby, and you know what I'm saying? Them folks ain't taken care of, and it's like they sweep that under the rug. What happened to the authenticity in, in the game, you think? I mean, it's, everything is microwaved. It just kind of got swept under the rug. Like, 2019, 20, 2020, like, everybody was making money. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, everybody remember that time. Like, everybody was making money. Everybody could kind of back up what they were saying, and then the real happened. Mm. You know what I mean? And it's like people are kind of – trying to play catch up mm. or trying to relive the past and try to keep up with the Joneses instead of just like buckling down. Like people don't even know what they really stand for, what they mm. believe in. Let me ask you this then. Like on my platform, I try to like just be, have those vulnerable moments with people, when, men and women, right? Yeah. And it's easy, like I always say this, hindsight is always twenty twenty, right? Yeah. And it's, it's fortunate, God bless you for sure, to be able to say, I, I got that ha-ha moment. Mm -hmm. But Sometimes being a man and on and standing on something, you don't always get the the favorite, the odds in your court. Sometimes you get the short end of the stick. And I'm just curious, would you still be as confident in your decision even if things went the other way? Yeah. Mm. That's that's the that's the the biggest thing of it all. Because it's like, nah, hell no. Nah. Mm. You gotta think about it. Me and Gunner talked every day when he was in jail. Mm. Now y'all get out and y'all y'all put you know a uh, a title on them because y'all don't know nothing basically you know and it's trendy mm. so it's I ain't gonna lie like it's 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 sad you know what I mean like how fast like somebody can say something and everybody run with it and some of that shit was funny mm. you know what I'm saying like you see the jokes and we laughing like damn that was a good one you know what I'm saying but in, in reality it's like you see a seven figure check come in. And I can still take care of my family, and you know what I'm saying. I still stand it on my morals and what I believe in. And and it's, I'm not saying ha ha like it's a good thing. Like it was a hurt for ha ha too. Mm. There's a lot of I don't fuck with no more. Mm. And it just is what it is. But we growing like we men. It happens. It's nothing that you can do about it. You swallow it and you wake up and you go. How long did it take for you to wake up and go? Because hearing it, it sounds so easy, but like that's a process. Like. For for people, you to cut people off, people to cut you off, for it to hit home and like, man, this is really acting weird. How how long did that you think that took for you to really wake up? I'm still I'm still waking up. Mm. I'm still getting the cold out of my eyes. Damn. Like, damn, boy, you Shit, all right, cool. Like, I got I gotta keep going though. You know what I'm saying? Like what I'm finna stop for, like, because we grew up together or we we had we went through some like mm. that's you had that in you the whole time, so it's cool, like. That's powerful to hear you say that, bro. I talk to so many people and like I, I hear so 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 often people try to like run away from that real feeling of like it hurting. Like it yeah. hurt. And you know what I'm saying? Like so many people like, it don't hurt, it ain't nothing, man. I don't, they don't fuck me. But it's like that's not true because we all human, we all got a feeling and and, and things hurt, and that's okay. Yeah. That don't mean you gotta stop, that don't mean it kills, it don't make make you any less. But I have anything to be able to acknowledge that it hurt and but I'm still making it through. I think that I think those are the stronger people. In my perspective, in my opinion, yeah, but that's so. that's that's truly crazy, and I'm I'm glad we was able to start off like that because it means a lot. So when we talk about the music industry, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like so many people glorify the streets. They glorify everything that shouldn't be glorified. But at the end of the day, one thing remains the same, and it's the music, and if it's good or not. Yeah. And I was wondering, just from your experience, what have you learned throughout the music industry, seeing how they act and how they try to portray people and how they try to keep it one way when it's really not? Uh, it's business. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's just like the street, mm. I guess. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you in the street and it's it's not like it's peaches and cream, but you still get you get you get the the, the rewards from it. You get the money and the cars and whatever come with that. So it's like you still in that business. It's the same thing. It's business. Like you can, you can either be hurt by it and and choose to be emotional, or you can do the work and reap the benefits. You know, it's funny. 
I'm trying to be careful because I understand what, 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 what's going on, but this is just how I feel. Because like, yeah. I'm talking about, but sometimes my opinion can be like similar to what's going on and I'm not even talking about what's going on. Yeah, facts. But when you say it's, it's just like the streets, it's funny because like I talk to everybody. I've never been a street guy. I came from the project, but I never glorified that. I'm yep. from there. I'm not of it, right? Yep, yep. And hearing that you say is it's, it's, it's just like the streets. But understanding it's just like the streets has never, ever been no loyalty in the streets. Never. And everybody knows this. And I say that only strictly talking to the music hit me out. And I say that because, like, I was just talking to Roddy, right? Uh -huh. Roddy um, Rebel. And I was just telling him it was unfortunate how people glorify being a real so much. Mm -hmm. But when you when you got out, you ain't get the same energy as when you was in. Mm. Right? And I, But streets, like, people could say what you should do, right? Mm. But the moment you, like, people like, you let that hit you, you let that punk you. But the moment you go kill it, ain't nobody putting no money on your books. And you right? Yeah. So it's, and it's unfortunate for the young that's growing up and, like, because we ain't, it, I was a point. I was a point, part of it when I didn't know any better. Yeah. People tell you what you should do, then you do it, and it's like, damn, what? What my support? What my support? My supporting cast. And I was talking to Rod Roddy about that, but I say that to say, music industry is the same way. Yeah, it's similar, and it's and I mean, it's it's more it's more like that than ever. Mm. And that's the real up part. Like I ain't work out. It's hard to go and try to prove myself. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm really living my dream right now. That's a fact. All right, let's get to it, man. We talking about your dream and you making this music for so many uh, big artists, but at the end of the day, you still a producer, right? Yep. And we know that the producers are mainly in the in the backgrounds and the shadows. Mm -hmm. yep. And yeah, we might hear a tag if it go crazy, yep. right? Mm -hmm. But I feel like it's still a nuance that you guys still don't really get the respect that you deserve. Do you agree? Mm, it's not given, mm. but you definitely can get it. You can obtain it for sure. How? Being a producer, I'm curious. I mean, look at Metro Boomin. It it wasn't easy okay. for everybody to know Metro. Metro been doing this shit for years. You know what I'm saying? But now he's like a household name, you know, outside of his production. And he's doing shows and he's overseas and doing festivals and shit like that. DJ Khaled. You know what I mean? Like, but a Metro not a DJ Khaled, though. And, and when we talking about the work, I'm just... I'm trying to be careful, but I'm just being real. I don't think when it comes to the work that's being put into the music, and again, I, I might be wrong. Mm -hmm. I would think Metro had to like, I don't want to say do more, but somewhere around that. I feel like he's a producer. He's really hands on. Like, I mean, try to get a, try to get a, try to get a uh, Jay Z, Beyonce, and Rihanna record and see how easy it is. Or see nah, if, facts. You, if you make any money off of it, yeah, that's fact. That be the thing that I be saying when people have something to say about Khaled. You know what I'm saying? And shout out to him. It's like, try to do it. Facts. <laughs> nah, it's easy. That's a fact. That's <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's like, a fact. That's and, a fact. It's, and it's a lot of work that goes into it. So, you know, for me, as I'm stepping into it and I get a chance to really see, oh, yeah, like this isn't like call your friend and get a favor. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like, nah, it's way more than that. And then you got to deal with their team and they label and just a bunch of hoops just for the fans to receive the music and enjoy it. Since you're being so open and vulnerable, let me talk. Let me, I'm curious. <laughs> when, because that's a wake up moment too. It yeah. had to be like, we all had. It. I mean, I don't know. I did. When was it? When did you grow past to? Man, these are not even real producers. Did you ever had that like thought probably like coming up and before you really got into the game? Yeah, I, I mean, I felt that before I had even like got any notoriety because when I was young, like. Like Timberland, Timberland and Swiss Beats, they used to call themselves super producers. Mm. And that's what I was trying to strive to be, a super producer. But you couldn't be a super producer without placements. You couldn't be a super producer without, you know, a catalog. You know what I mean? So it was never, like, surprising to me. You mm. know what I mean? It didn't get surprising until, like, I started seeing how easily some of these kids was, like, getting on and then, like, letting it go to their head instead of just... Like keeping their head down and working, but you always had the vision and understanding of the work that goes into like getting yeah. a name. Because a lot of people try to downplay Khaled, right? Yeah. A lot, but it's a it's a it, it takes a lot to even build your name up to to the to the place where you can make a phone call to somebody and I'm like, all right, bet go see his house. Mm. So you always you always understood that. I mean, you know, I'm not gonna say at a younger age that. You know, I always understood it, but, you know, as I started going up, 
you know, I understood it a little bit more and I had some respect for it. And then I went and seen his house. <laughs> yeah. And then part of, part of it, like, you probably started to get some of that, maybe. People probably, Somewhat. people probably like try, trying to downplay what you do when it's like, bro, you have no idea. Oh, oh man. They, they always going to do it. You know mm. what I mean? It's like the that's, that's talking about LeBron at home rubbing Facts. his feet together. Facts. You know what I'm saying? No like, that's they always going to do it when you when you up there, you a target. You know mm. what I mean? Drake. All these guys, they targets. You know what I'm saying? But it's I don't like, think Drake. Drake. I think Drake solidified himself. Like you can't really say nothing. They tried to hate on his album on the first week, and now it's like every you 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 hear it everywhere. That's true. That's it's true. like when you when you when you up in the sky. You know what I'm saying? It's like trying to shoot at a star, and you are gonna always miss. But that star, you gotta think about what he going through. You know what I mean? Let's stay there for a second, bro. How does Drake do it? I'm just curious. I don't know, bro. It's no way. <laughs> it's not. I, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be a hundred percent, bro. I feel like I too didn't like his project at first. Yeah. But I was so foolish. I don't think I ever liked none of Drake's projects at first. Now you. But I should have known better. You in the car talking about bend that ass over, man. <laughs> Shake that ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody is. <laughs> like, bro, it's like, yo, yo, right, because you're producing, you got some artists in you. Yeah. Like, the, how many mo how many times have you had that moment where you made something and you know that it was going to catch, but like it probably didn't catch right away? Um, give me a song. Um, that we might know. I don't know. I I never really had that feeling about a song. Because I learned my lesson on, on, on that type of shit. Mm. It's, it's more so like the beats. Like me thinking that, oh yeah, this beat is going to be something and it doesn't. But like songs, nah. Because you could also, as a producer, especially me, somebody with an opinion, you should, you can talk your way out of a hit coming out. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like I learned my lesson on that. How like, you do that? You think that the songs suck and it's not it's not for you. It's for the people. It's for the fans. You know what I mean? It might resonate with them. That's a fact. So now I'm telling my mans, which is an artist, anybody, you know what I'm saying? A Roddy Rich or somebody like, yeah, I don't like that song. And it's like, okay, Turbo said he don't like that song, so it's not going to come out. But it might be a million people that like this song. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, so I ain't never really had one of those moments. Yo, to the, to, the, to the young producers out there that's looking at you, right? Yeah. And that got the, the hoop dreams for like a better words from my audio listeners, um, quote, unquote. Yeah. And I think I heard you say it was like maybe a year ago, a couple months ago, when you was like, um, you really not at the place where you want to be like this big, uh, like at your end goal, basically, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. But to that, that young dude that's looking at you, they looking at you like, she, I wish I could be making songs with Gun. I wish I could have Roddy on a song. Like they looking at you like, man, you're the ultimate goal. I mean, shit, it, it's that it, it don't stop right there. You mm. know what I mean? Like once you get to my level, you still going to have to look up at somebody. Because, mm. yeah, you're going to get here and it's like walking up the steps. You in a you in a hundred-story building and you get to a plateau and stop, shit, you still in the fucking thing with a step set. You still mm. in the emergency area. You ain't got nowhere. You know what I mean? So it's like you got to really choose what's, what's that for you. You know what I mean? And it might be family. It might not be $100 million. Mm. It might be you got your family and you got a villa in, in uh, Costa Rica. What is it for you, you think? Still figuring it out. Mm. I feel good about it, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel good about where I'm at. Like, you know, I always say that for me, my motivation was, like, my family and, like, you know, paying off my grandmother's house. And that was, like, the first thing I ever did. So when I did it, I kind of lost motivation. Mm. It was like I on these late night shit, I can go home. Because before it was like, nah, I need to pay my grandma's house off. When I paid it off, it's like, shit, you don't, I'm going to go home. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I had to refine whatever it was that drive, and I'm still kind of finding it. You know what I mean? But, as cliche as this question is, right? Somebody yeah. asked me this, but how are you finding? You say you still finding it, but how are you finding that that motivation in times where it seems like everything is going well? You gotta, you gotta keep, you gotta keep going. Like, yeah, right. it's going well, but it could go great. Mm. And even even past great, it could it's better. This it's another word or analogy for great. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It could like, be awesome. Nigga. Yeah, it could be incredible. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so it's like you know, it, it's just all it's all on the person. It's all on your drive. Like what you want. Like you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of things that I want that I still haven't haven't got, and it's a lot of things that I'm doing right now as far as investments, whether it's time, money, or whatever, to get to that place in a few years. Mm. 
we opened the conversation with um it feels good to be a man. Yeah. Right. And um we talking about work and like just getting to these different levels. And I think I've had this conversation before. And like we always say it's about our family, mm-hmm. our wives, our kids. And the more and more I think about that, I just be like, damn, man, I'm lying to myself because if my family is good, I'm still gonna be working my ass off. So I wanna ask you, somebody who says it feels good to be a man. I'm curious to know, can you be, can you truly be a man and be content when you do check off those boxes? Because I feel like we always create more boxes to check off. Yeah, because I feel like now, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm motivating my team. I'm motivating other people, like you saying, them young producers, you mm. know what I mean? And, you know, I'm finna, I'm finna go and donate some money to my high school by the time this come out, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm gonna go donate some money to my high school and... That's gonna be a thing. So everybody at that at mm. Banneker High School in College Park, Georgia, is gonna know shit. When you get up, this is what you do. You come back home. You know mm. what I mean? So it's it's never ending, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like my family's straight. I'm cool. You know what I mean? But I always find different things, or I might see something, and it's like, nah, I want that. You know what I mean? Mm. If you if you if you have any type of that in your bone or or in your body, it's like. You probably won't get to this place because shit, you might get a hundred thousand. Feel like that's cool. You have uh kids or yeah, fa- like, I got two daughters. So for your daughters, right, that might not understand the work at a time, and it's always changing, it's always evolving. Mm-hmm. How do you explain that to them? Like when we say it's about our family as men, still having this man conversation. How do we explain that to our family, our wives, our kids? That like it's always evolving. Like I'm now I'm motivating my team. At first it was about buying paying my, my grandma a crib off. Mm-hmm. Now it's about motivating it the, the youth. I don't think it's an explanation. I don't think it's words. I mm. think it's me and we gotta show. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I could tell you everything in the world, but if you don't see me doing it, then whatever I'm telling you ain't don't hold no weight. Mm. That's like nice. as men, like I'm 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 gonna be showing my kids that to the day I die. You know mm. what I mean? Like what it what it is to be a leader, what it is to be a man, what your what your father thought was morally correct or how you should move. How important is that? Like why why is that? It's super important. Look at what's going on in the world. But why? Shit, what, what's gonna happen in thirty years? What's gonna happen when you old? You know mm. what I'm saying? If you don't show these kids what what they supposed to do, mm. they don't got no guidance. Ain't no, you know what I mean? Like shit, what what they gonna be? No, nah, it's crazy. I only asked that because I had a conversation that we were talking about legacy. Yeah. And um, a guy was saying that he don't really do it for legacy because the work that he put in, his kids would never really would never really treat his dream how he would treat it, right? And also, let's look at other legacies, right? Let's say Martin Luther King. Mm-hmm. Somebody with probably the biggest legacy in the African-American culture. Mm-hmm. How many times a day we really think about Martin Luther King? Like, yeah, we see his streets on every, in every major city mm-hmm. in, the, in the country, but, I mean, how many times do we go day-to-day thinking about, oh, I do this in remembrance of Martin Luther King? That's why I was asking, like, the importance of that. Yeah, I mean... I know I might be going too deep in this. Nah, it's not that. too <laughs> deep because I, 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 you know, it, it needs to be, this conversation needs to be had. But, like, I feel like you should strive to, to like, like my grandma told me this, you know what I'm saying, a while ago. And um, the basic, like, the quote was, like, you should strive to reach places that's going to benefit, like, your children's children. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Or, like, their children after that. If you are are shooting at something that your kids are going to reap the benefits at you shooting too low. Mm. That's crazy. Yeah. Your grandmother said this. She said that. Having one of them real, eh. One of them babies. <laughs> 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 nah, facts. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's real, though. Like, yeah. they say if your dream don't scare you, then it's, it's not big enough. Exactly. Right? And it's like, so, what you got to lose? Mm. So who else? Um, the work, we got the Gunner Project song. I keep saying project. Yeah. Song coming out. Um, how does that work when a, a producer make a song with an artist? Like, is it um, like Turbo Gunna, or is it just Gunna produced by? Like, how does that work? Yeah, like you know, it's, it's Turbo featuring Gunna. You know what I mean? It's you know, I'm doing stuff to promote it myself. You know mm. what I mean? Like, it's same thing, same thing. Like a Metro or DJ Khaled, you'll see. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is how you promote the music. So you going that route to like to be an artist now? Almost. I'm working on my album. 
You're not gonna rap though, are you? Nah, nah, yeah. I'm How not. do you feel about producers? Because there's a lot of producers that's starting to rap now. I mean, if you fire, look, man, there's no lines in this shit, bro. It's no right or wrong. You know what I mean? Because you being safe. Nah, look at Kanye. He was a producer. This is a fact. That's true. You know what I'm saying? If he was just like, yeah, I'm going to make beats, uh, you know what I mean? We would never have Kanye. Mm. Okay. But there's a lot of producers that I see trying trying to make music now. Hey. I don't want to shave nobody, but. You can't tell a nigga not to shoot his shot. Of course not. Look at Kanye. Like you said, look at Kanye. Yeah. I would, <laughs> hey, I learned my lesson. I'm the type. I learned. I learned. I learned my lesson. And I learned my lesson on counting niggas out, too. Facts. Because I used to be on that, and then a nigga uh, blow straight through the water. You know what I mean? And Facts. it's like, damn, like. That's not a good feeling when you sitting at home by yourself. You know what I'm saying? Right? <laughs> <laughs> no cap. Yeah. No cap. And so, okay. So, um, you work on the project, like, you going to have Roddy on there, of course. Yeah, my brother, yep. How are you going about, how, how you going, like, what's the plan of action to get some more artists on, on this project featuring? Uh, I, don't, I don't got no plan. You know what I mean? Like, I got a good body of work right now, and I'm calling that my foundation. And as I continue to announce that this is what I'm doing and I'm working on, you know, as I as I go to the studio and I'm around people, you know, this is this is what I'm gonna say. This is what I'm working on. Are you gonna talk on the project? Uh, you know a little DJ Khaled? Nah. I'm no? more I'm more on some composing type of type of feel. By making the beats. By making a moment. Making a soundtrack for your life. Mm, like getting the, like producing it really like getting the people I think this person sounds like this yeah. good with this person yeah it's like putting Michael Jackson and um, Stevie Wonder on a song that's true but even in that I feel like so many people can like take that for granted and be like man this wouldn't be nothing if it wasn't for me but they don't understand the importance of that what you mean by that so, for example, like I do these interviews, right? Yeah. Sometimes I'll ask a question and I don't say nothing. I give the space to the the interviewee to talk, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'll create a moment. It'll go viral. And then next thing you know, people will be like, man, they only went viral because of me. But they don't even understand. That you had to ask the question. The build up to it, yeah, right? Yeah. And sometimes like I've had that happen so many times at this point. And it's like somehow they always forget about the common denominator. There's a common denominator in all of these videos that went viral, but yeah. sometimes so, somehow every single person be like, Oh, it was because of me, it was because of me. And I was wondering, it had to that gotta be a, a producer feeling as well. Yeah, of course. Like and, and yeah, like that shit is <laughs> hand in hand. You know what I'm saying? Like a motherfucker forget that. You don't have a song without a beat. <laughs> you know what I'm Thanks. saying? Like, you can't... What are you singing or rapping on? You know what I mean? Mm. But, it, like I said, that shit really don't... Doesn't matter, you know, unless you have an ego that you're trying to stroke. I don't really care. You know what I mean? Come on, man. Like, if my, if my music is... People love my music, like, you know what I mean? Niggas know, and you're going to have to work harder. That's mm. why I'm saying, like, I put respect on some of them niggas' names that I, that I mentioned. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like... Just for a regular average person to know their names, that took a lot of work. Mm, that's a fact. It's funny because I used to, uh, shit, I'm talking too much now about this hating shit. I used to be like, <laughs> I used to hate when like famous people like this shit, like let's say a famous person start a podcast. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? I be mad. Yeah, <laughs> like, yep, they like, getting in your business. Yeah, like it's like it's easy, but yeah. as I grown, I, I had to understand that, like, nah, bro, they they work hard as hell to enjoy the fruits of their labors, mm -hmm. and part of the fruits of their labor is being able to pick up something else yeah. and being and having a head start because of the work that they put in their prior uh, career. Yeah, and it That's, ain't it ain't it, it ain't getting in your lane either. No, it's not. You know what I mean? No, nah, it's not for sure. One hundred percent. I understand that now. Yo, um, what about like? Do you ever feel like? This this instance of like people doing you a favor, like people trying to hold a feature as a favor and like try to hold it over here. Like, man, I did you a favor. I done did so many favors that ain't even on my mind. Mm. That ain't even on my brain. Mm. Yeah. McCauley. McCauley. I, like <laughs> I need that back. I need, I need that, that back. You remember? I should me. I don't think I'll ever have to. You know what I'm saying? But the 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 chamber is loaded on those. Hey, you remember? I, yeah. <laughs> But you know, it's all good. Like a lot of a lot of these folks that I'm working with are my friends. Like it's some funny shit, but it's you know. How much? Because you um, my team would tell me I'm not too familiar. I'm just I'm new to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. You got like uh, some young guys on the CEO, CEO Trail with my um. Nah, CEO Trail is his own. He person. wasn't working He's with you. Artist. Yeah, we did a uh, project, a Happy Halloween project. I think that was last year. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that, yeah. I'm somewhere in the room. So curious. 
are you giving those artists like opportunities, like an artist that might not be a gunna baby, yeah. you know what I'm saying, to be on a project with some of these other artists? Yeah, of course. Because it's all about the music, bro. That's crazy. The music is fired and shit. It don't matter. That's hard. I fuck with that. Yeah. That's hard. <laughs> How much, how much does that mean to you to be able to do that, though, put people in those positions? It means everything. Ain't nobody do it for me. Mm. So it's like it go right back to what I'm saying, like, of showing. I'm, I'm on some showing. This is what you're supposed to do, and it's cool. Like, I'm not holding it over your head. You know what I mean? It's like, it's cool. I do this every day. I work every day. Mm. It's, not, it's not a thing. You know what I mean? Like, it can if, if, if you want me to make it into a thing, mm. but it's not a thing. Like, let's work. Let's... It's work. People are afraid of that. Niggas don't want to work hard no more. Mm. No, nah, facts. I mean, like you said, this fucking, I, I was just telling somebody else, it's like we live in a world, a society full of like IG and not Instagram, like instant gratification. Like, oh, inst yeah. insta insta <laughs> like yeah, yeah. they need to change the name yeah, from Instagram insta to yeah, instant oh gratification, bro. That was bro. a bar. That but was a huge bar. It's like that's all people want nowadays. It's yeah, like, right, yeah. what happened is they'll see Turbo, right? And they be like, Man, I want to do what he did. Yeah, it's like, bro, he did a lot to get to where he is. And you ain't even see it. You don't and, even know. And then what they don't know is where you are takes so much more than where you came from. Yeah, so many more bills, so many more people to pay, so much, so many more cousins. Right, that ain't really your cousin. It's like people don't understand, man. That's yeah. just, that's no, just but great. you know, it's it's come with the territory. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. So I mean, I, it sounds like everything is, is going well. Everything's going great. Yeah, man. Hey, this is this is fire. I, I, I definitely appreciate you for pulling up, bro. Sure. Um, anything I can do to support to help? What well, what you got going on? I'm here just because you came with a mad time. Yeah. You feel me? I love that because like I just feel like we don't have a lot of that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's just, it's just, for it, sure. How was the like? Cause I'm. I always say I like my, my man Seven. I always be like I'm in the music industry. Yeah. Cause I always be like. I'm, I'm not in the industry. Like, I'm like, these industry niggas, da, da, da. I look at you, I'm like, you directly in the industry. How yeah. is it? Like, is it is it is it fake like we say it? Is it, it like, how is it? I mean, anything is what you want. It was what you make it. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, Don't give me that. Nah, 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 nah. What? I it, could be mad at certain niggas, but what that's going to do? Facts. You know what I mean? Like, I could feel hurt about certain things, but what is that going to do? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why I also started off by saying, like, I didn't work this hard and I'm not living my dream to like go backwards, bro. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like it took a lot to just get to this place and not even like in the industry just for my family and like, how I live. I live a great life. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it was like one little small pecan ass something. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Could fuck up my whole shit. Mm -hmm. So why am I finna indulge in that, bro? I, you know, hey, cool. Note it. Mm -hmm. That's it's never fun. not note it. You know what I'm saying? It's never, I got a notepad in the back of my in the back of my pants right now. It's never not noted, but cool. Like even in the notes, it's crazy because I got everything noted. But even in the notes, some people still can spend a bin, and I'm gonna just treat it like business. It's cool. I ain't even going. It's cool. I know, Cause, but it's cool because it's you gotta you 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 gotta see where people gonna be at in the long game. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, you might get that right now. Catch me in a couple years. Catch me. Let me see how you living. Let me see what you're driving. Let me see what you got on your feet. Let me mm -hmm. see if you spend the same amount of money if I catch you in Ruth Chris or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's kind of, that's that's not even kind of, that's what I'm after. Mm. I see you coming here, you dripped up, you look good, right? You shining out sure this motherfucker, you feel me? <laughs> I seen um, Zaytoven say something a while back. He said uh, gotcha his first his first check, he bought a chain mm -hmm. and he got fired because he wanted to walk in the room and niggas recognize him, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm curious from another producer, is that true? Do you kind of have to match the vibe of the rappers or uh, just be fly for people to want to work with you? Yeah, I mean, no, nah, not for people to want to work with you. It's all about what you do because you can come in there dripped out and then play some bullshit and it's like, it's not going to matter. But um, I think it is important to carry yourself correctly. Mm. And that don't have nothing to do with no $100,000 chain. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, it, I was scared of that. You know what I mean? When I first got, like, some money... I was scared of that. I remember J. Cole saying that, Kanye saying that. Like, I bought a, I bought a house before I bought a chain. I bought four properties before I bought a chain. Mm. And it still worked out. Worked out great. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially now where interest rates at, that shit worked out incredible. <laughs> 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 you know what Wait, what was it? So what was your first, uh, like, stupid purchase? 
stupid purchase. Yeah, did you have one? I know you had to have something you just blew a bag on. I haven't though. For real? Nah, like just like stupid, stupid. Yeah. Like it was kind of like stupid shit over time. You know what I'm saying? Going to the club and that's not really what you call stupid, but like going you know to what the I'm club, saying? like like strip club. Yeah, like that can be stupid. Yeah, if you throw like a ten or something one night, then it's kind of like stupid. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> Like my stupid shit was like over time. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like, like, nah, I haven't had one of those because I, like I said, I was always scared, mm. scared of. It. No, that makes sense. So, and another question, just curious, since we here talking about investments, with all these um, artists and producers like selling their their catalogs and mm-hmm. things like that, is that something that you would ever entertain? Hmm. You might be having a conversation right now. Nah, I'm not. What's the number? What's the number to have to have a conversation? One of them, one of them, hundred mil type. Woo! a hundred million. Yeah, for my catalog. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I got diamond songs. How long though? Because they're giving it back after like a few years. No, I don't really know how it worked. You know what I mean? But I also wouldn't do it without a plan. Mm. You know, some people is doing that, and I don't really, I don't really know. I can't count no nigga pockets, but. You know what I mean? Like I would definitely have a plan because you get your hundred million dollars and you get taxed on it. You know what I'm saying? You get a couple jets, you live cool for ten years, and then shit. You know what I'm saying? No, no, no disrespect to Shouty, but you looking like the NBA nigga whose wife was just on OnlyFans. Yo, this thing is crazy, bro. <laughs> no disrespect to him. You know what I'm saying? Like, no disrespect. To him. A nigga always like, <laughs> you know, nigga like, with all due respect, and there's something disrespectful. <laughs> no, no, no disrespect to him. Not, not at all. But that's scary. No facts. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's scary, bro. Like, no cap, you know no what cap. I mean? And God bless. So, the, so, so to get your catalog, we talking a hundred million? Yeah, at least. Sheesh. Yeah, to have a conversation. If not, shit, I'm gonna just keep on working. But you can still, like, if somebody buy a cat, you can still make new music, though, right? Yeah, you can, but shit, with $100 million, I'm gonna, I'm gonna chill. I'm in, I'm in the beach. Yeah. I'm relaxing. I'm finna, I'm starting a, 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 a investment group. Shit. Damn, nah, that's crazy. Nah. Yeah. I fuck with it, man. I appreciate you for pulling up, man. For sure. Um, like I said, what's your number success? Uh, Anything we missed out on? I know the, the, the song is dropping. What's the name of the song? Again? Yeah, Bachelor is dropping uh, November third. It'll probably be out by the time this come out, right? Mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. Bachelor is coming out. My first single featuring Gunner. And uh, yeah, look out for that album. Yeah, how is how is he doing? Like his mental space. I'm you made music with incredible. him. Incredible. Mm. Boy in the gym every day, two three times a day. See that nigga you know what I'm small, man. Boy doing two hundred push ups. Mm. Rapping his ass off. You know what I mean? Like better than he was before. To be honest. Mm. That's good, man. And, and like you said, bro, just just being able to stand on man time, right? It, like in the, in the world that we live in, like I I I really salute you. Yeah. I'm not just saying that. Trust me, I don't I don't wanna be giving it up when I don't have to. <laughs> yeah. Trust me, that ain't me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm from Baltimore, so we keep yeah. it real. But nah, man. Um, it definitely this conversation was refresh, refreshing. Just hearing somebody that's still genuine and, and authentic that's doing that thing and is so successful as yourself. So sure. appreciate you, my guy. Sure. Appreciate you having me. No problem. Turbo, Mr. J Hill. J Hill Podcast. It's a wrap. We out.